as we're looking at all six games Saturday to Monday, starting with quarterback. Pierce, whose price sticks out to you? I like going with Jalen Hurts at 6,100. I'll take the savings and the rushing floor. We've noted on this show before that Tampa struggles with running quarterbacks. They've allowed the fourth most rushing yards to opposing quarterbacks. Jalen Hurts, 40 yards, two rushing touchdowns the last time that he matched up in week seven against Tampa. And my concern is with this Tampa offense, they don't quite have the weapons they've had all season. They could struggle to move the chains. That could be more possessions for Jalen Hurts. And he's going to go under own. He's cheap, and he's got a pretty high upside based on his rushing ability. It's risky, but in a small slate, it's worth the chance. All right, what do we think, Matt? Which quarterback's price sticks out to you? For me, it's Dak Prescott. So I was initially looking at this Raiders and Bengals game. Um, the advantage that Dak has with the Cowboys against the Niners is they're playing indoors. And as we get into January, as you guys mentioned, it's it's a little bit cold just about everywhere. Uh, so the Cowboys playing in a dome, I think, does help a lot. Dak Prescott's only 6,400, which probably seems about normal for him. Um, but what really helps here also is that his receivers are really cheap. Um, we have Amari Cooper and C.D. Lamb both around $6,000. So I think this stack is going to be easy to fit. Um, Prescott himself at 6,400, I think that's a bit of a value. And this is a play, too, where I think a lot of the players are just priced in the mid-range. So paying up is just a little bit more difficult. We don't really have value plays. So I think you do need to save a little at just about every position, and Prescott it allows you to do that. All right, Steve, what do you think? Yeah, roll with Pierce. I love using Jalen Hurts against his Buccaneers secondary. They can't stop anybody. Look at all these awful teams that they face at the end of the year. They couldn't stop anyone. Zach Wilson's going down the field. Sam Darnold's going down the field against this team. Come on. No, look, we talk about that game that Jalen Hurts had early in the year. Only threw for 115 yards. Okay, well, that's annoying. But then he also ran the ball 10 times for 44 yards and two touchdowns. I don't care how he gets his fantasy points as long as they come against this Tampa Bay defense. And that's being generous. Jalen Hurts is going to put some points up against his team. 6,100, that's a steal. Give me Jalen Hurts. All right, well, let's move it on over to the running back category here. Who are you eyeing, Matt? I'm going to go right back to the same team. I just think the Cowboys are really underpriced across the board. Ezekiel Elliott is $6,100, and Tony Pollard is expected to play in the wild card game. But he has been hurt, and I don't know that he's going to be able to get the workload that we were used to seeing. Um, I think that Zeke also, for much of the season, the Cowboys were in preservation mode, trying to make sure that he was healthy because he was the one that was banged up before Pollard was. Um, so I think the tables have kind of flipped there where Elliott is the one that's actually healthy right now. Pollard is the one that's more of a question mark. And if the Cowboys need to throw more, or if they have leads, those are both situations that set up well for Elliott. He's their more reliable running back, and he's their better pass blocker is really the big thing here. So in these passing situations, I think we see more Zeke on the field, and this could be a game where his snap count is much higher than what it was throughout the regular season. Steve, hook me up with a running back you like. Yeah, Joe Mixon is the most expensive running back on the slate, but 6800 is hardly a high price that you have to pay on in this game against the Raiders. You know, we talk about how bad the Bucks are through the air. The Raiders are atrocious on the ground. We've already seen Mixon shred this team already this season back in week 11, ran the ball 30 times for 123 yards, two touchdowns, and averaged 4.1 yards per carry. We obviously haven't seen him since week 17 against the Chiefs because he was on the, uh, um, on the COVID list, so he didn't play in week 18. But this is someone who's going to carry the ball at least 15 times. He's going to be used immensely in the red zone. So that type of upside against a run defense that can't, can't stop anything. Let's be fair, the Raiders probably shouldn't even be here to begin with. So they're just happy to be in the dance. The dance is going to be over. Parents are out front to pick you up. Time to go. The oh. dance is over, buddy. Joe Mixon's going to be the one to run them out of the building. Oh, God, man. so embarrassing when your parents were outside to I pick you up. I was always Park like... down the block! I was always like sad and miserable. You always wanted to like have it go like one more hour. Yeah. You know? Yeah. They're like, nope, get in the they car. Like, get in the minivan. All right, Pierce, uh, whose parents are going to be ready to pick up your running back? <laughs> well, I usually had already left at that point. My life is so <laughs> That's another story. Pierce was Sony. a chaperone. <laughs> no, I never did it. They, I refused. Anyway, Sonny Michelle, 5,400. 
talking about bad defenses, and there's some edge here. People are going to see that Arizona, oh, well, they have a good rush defense. They don't. I don't know what's going on at Football Outsiders, but Arizona's rush defense is not good. For whatever reason, the data hasn't updated. Last week, they gave up 190 yards. Yes, they stopped Dallas, but Dallas had injured running backs. 100 yards to Jonathan Taylor, 100 yards to Craig Reynolds, whoever that is. 80-some yards to Sonny Michelle, 90 yards to Montgomery, 140 yards to three different running backs for Carolina. This is not a good run defense. Michelle may not be the greatest running back on the slate, but he does have a good offensive line, and I like taking advantage of this matchup that most people don't really perceive as a good matchup. All right, how mm. about wide receivers? Talk to me, Steve. Yeah, I think this is actually a pretty good spot for Amari Cooper. Matt's all been all over the uh, Cowboys thus far, but I think this is a really good spot for Amari Cooper going up against the 49ers. They've been running like this carousel of characters at, at, at quarterback, whether it's injuries or COVID issues or whatnot. But, you know, Cooper has quietly seen at least seven targets in four of his last five games, putting up some solid production at his price point. I mean, he's all the way down at 5,900. That's a dramatic drop-off than what we've seen from him over the, at least the past month or so. This is such a cheap price uh, for Amari Cooper. So at this price point, for somebody that's getting the amount of volume that he does against a very beatable 49ers secondary, I think this is a great spot for Amari Cooper. This is a value we very rarely see for somebody um, uh, with the volume that he gets. So I think Amari Cooper is one of the better plays of wide receiver this week. Yeah, just 5,900. Pierce, where are you going for your wide receiver? Well, let's take the other Cooper, and he's not much of a value, but Cooper Cup, he's the best receiver in football. No one can guard him. You don't really need much more deeper analysis than that. He has a great offensive line that's protecting his above-average quarterback, and also Arizona's pass defense, not very good. In December, they lost Robert Alford, one of the best cornerbacks in the league. Since then, they've allowed 14 touchdowns and just one interception. This is, again, a defense that can be targeted, that on paper supposedly is good, but they are not playing well. Uh, yeah, you got to find a way to afford Cup, but if you can get there, you absolutely jam him in. All right, Matt, where are you going? So Steve mentioned the game that I've been talking about with the Cowboys. I'll go back to the game that these guys were talking about with Eagles and Bucks. Um, Tampa Bay is really shorthanded at wide receiver. So Cyril Grayson was elevated to their number two for the final week of the season, and he got injured also. They're obviously already without Antonio Brown and Chris Godwin. Um, now we have Brashad Perriman at 4,700, who I think might be the best true value play. I mean, Pierce is right. Like Cooper Cup is still a value at $9,000. But I think among cheap players, which may be, you know, a tough commodity this week, just it's it's going to be hard to fit in expensive players. Perriman at 4,700 figures to be a starting wide receiver, assuming Grayson's out. Um, and he's in a game where there should be a lot of passing, and especially with Tom Brady being your quarterback in that game. Uh, Jalen Hurts may be running the ball himself on the other side, but Brady's going to have to throw. So I think Perriman could be in a good spot, depending how the injury report shakes out later in the week. Pierce, talk tight end to me. This is your position. This is typically where you shine or you either fail tremendously. Probably the latter, more than the former. <laughs> Uh, Dallas Goddard is going to be the guy you can consider playing Jalen Hurts by himself. But if Jalen Hurts works this week and wins GPP, it's not going to be purely on rushing yards. He's going to move the ball through the air. So you're going to have to have at least one of those Philadelphia receivers. And the guy to go to will be Dallas Goddard. I mean, you look at what Tampa Bay has done. They've allowed 92 receptions to tight ends. That's the sixth worst in the league. And Philadelphia, have, as they've gone on this hot streak to make it into the playoffs, a lot of that's had to do with Dallas Goddard. Five of these six wins, he's had a five-catch, 60-reception yard uh, floor. I don't think it's unreasonable to expect him to get around eight receptions or 100 yards and a touchdown based on some of his game logs. Yeah, he had a down game against the Giants, but that was a blowout. He really is the one guy that you want to pair with Jalen Hurts if you're going that direction. It may be the first time you've given us a starter at tight end since like yeah, week four impressed. or five or something. So, yeah, hey, listen, you, you are getting better. You are improving. You're doing great, Thanks. sweetie. Matt, who's your tight end? I'm going to take a little more of a GPP angle with this one. And it's a guy who definitely could be underpriced. There's just a lot of uncertainty with him. And that's Darren Waller at $5,700. Like this price is nuts if Waller's healthy. The thing is, we just don't know how healthy he is. He came back for the Raiders' final game of the season. It's unclear, you know, just how he looked. I mean, to me, it seemed like at times he looked like the typical Darren Waller who could be a target monster, and at other times he just wasn't running the routes in the same way that he used to. So, like, if you want to take a shot that Waller's healthy and picks up the targets like he was earlier in the season, 
Um, he could crush at that price tag for 5,700. And it's a good matchup, too. The Bengals' defense isn't particularly good either. So I think that there's a pretty low floor with this one if Waller's not healthy. But I think for his price, he has the most upside of any tight end on the slate. Steve, who's got some upside for you uh, at tight end? I don't know if I'd say he has a lot of upside, but he's $3,200. Oh. He has at least six targets in four of his last five games. It's CJ Uzama. If he gets into the end zone, that's all you're going to need for him to pay off his salary at how, how low it is. The thing that appeals to me the most is that the Raiders are just not a good team against opposing tight ends. They're one of three teams that allowed at least 10 touchdowns to that position. They gave up over 1,000 receiving yards to that position. So, look, Uzama at 3,200 is not a sexy play by any means. But you got to need one of at least one of these plays if you want to jam in some of these high-priced guys like a Joe Mixon, like a Cooper Cup, or whatnot. So, Uzama's that guy, you know, I don't give a crap about the tight end position. I just want to get some value in there. If he makes a few catches, I'm satisfied. Just give me that guy. Speaking of value, wow. let's really go there, Matt. Give us a value play. Well, the best value for sure today is that my phone is getting notifications from Emerson while I'm speaking to Emerson. I mean, wow. it's, it's so much at one time. It's just, am, it's just great. I am popular. I am a star <laughs> and I'm on television. Wow. So I'll give a potential value. Um, I already mentioned one running back. We'll just go back there because I do think some of them, there's, there's a few that are pretty underpriced. But Leonard Fournette, if he gets back into the lineup and – resumes his normal volume as the starter in Tampa Bay is only $5,900. Like Fournette was into the 7,000s just a couple weeks ago. Um, we don't know yet if he's going to play. We don't know if he does play, how much of the game he'll be out there for. So this is just one to keep an eye on because Fournette with a full workload, I think is probably the best points per dollar running back on the slate. All right, Steve, talk value to me. Yeah, I, I've mentioned him before, but going back to the Cardinals with Antoine Wesley, like this is somebody who had three touchdowns over his last three weeks of the season. Look, he's getting some targets now that DeAndre Hopkins is out of the mix here. We expect this game between the Rams and the Cardinals to be going back and forth in this one. So the new added opportunities that he's been getting, you know, his salary really hasn't caught up. He's still only 3,300. So if you want a value play in what's expected to be one of the highest scoring games on the slate, Wesley will allow you to do that. And Kyla Murray has used him in the red zone tune as well. All three of his touchdowns this season have come over the past few weeks. So at that price point, if he gets in the end zone, that's all you're going to need here. You give me Wesley. All right, Pierce, where are you going? I like Rashad Perriman, but Matt already mentioned him. So if you want to go even deeper, Tyler Johnson is $4,000. Johnson actually had more snaps, tends to play the slot. We know that Tom Brady likes to throw to slot receivers. And, you know, the story is no Brown, no, no Godwin, no Grayson. Brady will probably throw the ball to Mike Evans and Gronk a lot. So you definitely should consider rostering them. But the ball's got to go somewhere else. I know Fournette should be back. But remember, Fournette's role was to run the ball and catch passes nonstop. I can't see him going from the injury reserve list to all of a sudden being a big-time player. Someone's going to have to step up and fill the void. So if Perriman or Johnson, one of those guys, are going to be key value on the slate.